All right, I'm going to show you how interracial marriage nearly destroyed the Israelite culture back in the Old Testament. Ezra chapter 9 verses 11 through 14. Which thou hast commanded to be thy servants and prophets, saying, The land unto which ye go to possess it is an unclean land with, all, with the filthiness of the people of the land, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. Now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, neither seek their peace nor their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. And after all that is come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespass, seeing that thou, hast, that thou our God has punished us less uh, than our iniquities deserve and has given us such, given us such deliverance as this, shall we again break thy commandments and join in affinity uh, with the people of these abominations, wouldst not thou be angry with us till thou hast, thou hast com consumed us, so that there should be no remnant or escaping? Notice that. Very interesting. What is this great trespass and evil deed that was being committed? Interracial marriage. They were taking strange wives. They were taking the daughters of the land, sons of the land, giving their sons to the daughters of the land, get, uh, taking the daughters of the land for their sons, paraphrasing of course, it was interracial marriage. That was the great trespass and evil deed that was being committed. Ezra chapter 10 verses 10 to 14. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. And then all, then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. But the people are many, and it is a, a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand without, neither is, there, is this a work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed in this thing. Transgressed in this thing. Uh, now let now our rulers of the of all the congregation stand, and let them which have taken strange wives in our city come at appointed times, and with the, uh, them the elders of every city and the judges thereof, until the fierce wrath of our God for this matter be turned from us. Again, the Israelites are told to separate themselves from the people of the land. They've taken they've taken strange wives and they're told to separate from the people of the land. This was not a religion issue. The, the pro-integrationist heretics, they'll say, oh, it was just non-unbelievers versus believers. No, it wasn't. Not a single mention of religion in this passage, in these, these verses here. It was a racial issue. They had to separate from the kindreds of the land. They're taking strange wives into racial marriage. The Israelites had to put away their strange wives to prevent the fierce anger of God coming down. It's a very serious sin. Nehemiah chapter 13, verses 23 to 28. In those days also I saw, saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab, and their, their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them, and cursed them, and smote, a certain of, smote certain of them, and plucked off their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, or for, for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him? who is beloved of his God, and God had made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause him to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil and to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? Uh, and one of the sons of jo jo Joida, hope I'm saying that right, I'm not good at saying some of these names, the son of Elisha Nib, hope I'm saying that right too, the high priest, was son in the law of Sanballat, the Huronite, therefore I chased him from me. Again, the great sin, it's a great trespass. And the, per the passage it's referring to when it talks about King Solomon is 1 Kings 11, 1 through 8, where Solomon married strange wives. And marrying strange wives caused Solomon to sin, 
and the strange wife turned his heart from God. Notice how the religious aspect of this only comes in after Solomon marries the strange wives. Because the integration is, again, they'll say that the condemnations against interracial marriage are just against a believer marrying a non-believer. But here in 1 Kings 11, 1 through 8, which is what Nehemiah 13, 23 to 28 is referencing, uh, Solomon marries strange wives, and the result of that is he turns his heart from God. They turn his heart from God. In other words, Solomon committed interracial marriage, and the corrupt fruit that resulted from that was his heart being turned away from God. It's a very serious sin. It almost destroyed the Israeli culture. It almost destroyed the Israelite culture when it almost caused God's wrath to come down on Israel, the fierce anger of God for this great trespass, this great evil of interracial marriage. It's a very serious sin. And I do apologize if I've stuttered a bit. I'm not good at reading on a computer. It does hurt my eyes. So uh, just you know, bear with me for these videos. But it is a very serious sin, interracial marriage. It's a great evil, great trespass, evil deed. That's what the Bible says about interracial marriage. That's what the Word of God, the Scriptures, say about this sin of interracial marriage. So uh, when you see all this, all this propaganda of, oh, interracial marriage, there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly healthy. I showed in my other two videos that... It's, per it's completely unhealthy. Interracial marriage has all kinds of health problems, all kinds of psychological problems, mental problems, physical problems, uh, social problems, all this stuff. It's a great sin. It's an evil deed, an evil trespass in the eyes of God. So interracial marriage, avoid it. It's a very wicked sin. Don't be deceived by this propaganda that interracial marriage is fine and okay in the eyes of God. It's not. It's a great trespass. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.